coming off the starting line, you'll notice we take a hard left 90 degree turn into the A and B lane choice. B lane has been quicker through practice and qualifying. It's a longer version as far as the outside goes, but seems to be quicker because as you go through the A lane, you've got a 180 degree end down at turn 3A, and that seems to be hanging some people up. You empty back in at turn 4A and B, and that puts you right into the rhythm section, and look out for that second jump on the back end of that because it has been high centering several vehicles through practice and qualifying. Turn 5 is a big 180 degree sweeper to the left, which brings you back over the finish line jump. And that's one tour here in Tempe, Arizona at Sun Devil Stadium. And welcome back to Sun Devil Stadium in Phoenix, Arizona. More properly put, I guess, Tempe, but the bottom line is, Marty, we've reached the warm part of the schedule. Yeah, temperature today reaching 97 degrees, although now with the uh, sun setting off into the distance, cooling off a little bit into the 80s. <laughs> Race is in the hands of Gary Scheimer. He's in the box in the upper right-hand corner. And we are just about set to go. Let's come alive and we are off. Now it'll be interesting to see the decisions now, lane A or lane B. And already we see the majority of the trucks taking that high shoot. Yeah, lane B is the choice. Oh, Ivan gets uh, written up onto the hydro barrier, but uh, salvages it. And now it'll be interesting. We'll get a good idea which lane is quicker. Boy, I'll tell you, it looks almost dead even. It sure does. And as they come through the rhythm section for the first time, Roger Seward Sr. has taken the lead with one lap in the bag. So Roger Sr. picking up where he left off in Seattle and zoomed to the front here in the first heat race of the evening. And Mears Jr. is right behind Dad. Now, Sr. took the A lane and Jr. took the B lane. So now we'll get a good idea between the two Nissans. Roger Mears Sr., who took the truck out for practice laps 250, before that event in Seattle, got the suspension and the shocks dialed in, and apparently it's carried over a win in Seattle, and now a lead that is becoming bigger and bigger as this first heat race progresses tonight. Rob McCachran has moved into third place. In fact, he's battling Junior right now for second and will take the position. McCachran and Roger Junior in the battle for second. There you see the leader, Roger Sr., McCachran and Roger Junior in the battle for this second place. But now we see the split almost 50-50 now between the A and the B lanes. That is Rick Johnson hot on the tail of Rob McCaffrey, Ford versus Chevy. Both of them on BF Goodrich tires. And Roger see that we've got some trouble at the barrier at the uh, just through lane number turn number three. We've got a big pile up apparently right now. No caution flag. Yes, caution is out here as they uh, about halfway home in heat race number one. Take a look back at the start of the race. Watch how things get tight right into this A B lane choice. Notice that Walker Evans wanted that B side. That was quicker. And look what ends up happening. Ivan Stewart, Rob McCaffrey battling for position. Almost, almost take out Roger Mears. And then Ivan does get hung up on the Hydra barrier. And we're off on the restart. And again, a fair split of lane A and lane B. It's Roger Sr. who zooms to the lead, and Roger Jr. right there with him. They'll meet at the top of turn number four and see who gets the lead. Father or son, looks like Dad's going to get it. Well, he had a little hang-up on the Hydra Bear, but you're right. He's coming. Oh, and he's oh, getting pushed and up over. And he actually T-bones his son, but they're both okay. Roger Sr. and Jr. continue racing. Well, he got a little assist there from Rob McCaffrey. McCaffrey being very bold here. But it's Sr. who takes the lead. Jr. zooming in to second place. Oh, and then Jr. goes up on the bicycle again. Got a little nudge from McCaffrey. I'm wondering if uh, Rough Driving is going to take a look at this. It'll be interesting to see if they hand down any penalties. At the moment, Senior with the lead. McCaffrey on his heels, and as he makes the turn, now we'll come up to turn number four as we'll put three laps into the book here in heat race number one. Roger Mears Senior certainly has come on here in the last event and a half. And he is... Take a look inside with the... Uh, Ivan Stewart on his left. Notice the steering wheel. Looks like it's a little loose in there. Or a little bent. But I'll tell you right on Roger Sr. is McCaffrey who will certainly try to make his move before this one is all over. I'll tell you what, the Venable Racing Team with Rob McCaffrey at the wheel has made giant strides from last year. Uh, they brought on Nye Frank as the chief mechanic and Nye has a great history. He was with the championship Mazda team for five years back in the uh, mid to late 80s and he was also 
so going back even further with Craig Breedlove's uh, land speed record efforts, uh, this guy knows more about motors than you and I could ever dream about, and he has certainly put together some horsepower, plus Jim Venable with that 40 gave the crew one assignment, one assignment only before they had to basically take care of the desert racing program, whoa, and Senior gives up the lead with an error. He spins out, and it's McCacker who takes the lead, and now coming up right behind him is the overall points leader, Rod Millen, but McCacker using some misfortune by Roger Senior to grab the lead. In third currently, Rick Johnson. We'll see if Roger Senior can make up the lost time, but it will be absolutely, but it will be very difficult with only one lap to go. In fact, this will be the checkered flag coming up for Rob McCacker, so the, the focused effort of Venable Racing paying off here in heat number one. Our winner in heat number one, Rob McEachran, taking the misfortune of Roger Mears Sr. and turning it in to his good luck. Rob, congratulations on a fine heat win. You know, we were talking about the difference this team has seen with the addition of Nye Frank, the focus of the pit crew on this team, and one thing we didn't get to talk about was the number of test laps you've now been able to run. Well, that's right. Now that Nye Frank's on the team with us, Venable Race, we've acquired a uh, great test track, and between every race we go out two days, get anywhere from 50 to 100 laps and try all kinds of things. Venable Racing guys, the crew, everybody, this is for them. Take a look at this. This is what happened to Roger. You had a bird's eye view. Yeah, um, I was right behind Roger, and he bicycled right there, and I knew this is it. Don't make any mistakes, and we'll have this one won. And uh, it's unfortunate for Roger that that happened, but uh, that's part of racing. Hey, we'll see you in heat two. Thanks a lot, Marty. Race in the hands of the starter as soon as the green flag drops. We're going to go racing. It's up. It's down. And we're off. And he tops it in the number nine. With Walker Evans in the number five, they have the lead by virtue of the inverted start. We'll see what happens when they get up to turn number four. The guy I want to keep an eye on is Rod Millen all the way in the back with the uh, inverted starting order. And the Iron Man knows that he's got to get a good start. He's out in the front right now. And in fact, he's got the lead. He needs points badly. It's the Iron Man with Walker Evans and Brian Stewart. One, two, and three. Brian kind of clipping Danny Thompson. And then they kiss again at the top of turn number five. Whoa, look out right into our camera. Ivan Stewart racing to the lead, elected to take the lower lane to the top. It's Walker Evans, and we'll see what happens when they get to the top of the rhythm section. It appears that it will be the Iron Man who will retain the lead. So this perhaps may be a bust-out race for the Iron Man, who has suffered long and hard through the first three-plus events this season. Currently, Rogers Sr., Number three. Look at the action back in the pack. Ricky Johnson trying to muscle his way past Rob McCachron, and he does. That is back in about sixth, seventh position. The, the guy that's Mr. Consistency right now, when you think about it, is Roger Mears Sr. He's in third place, holding his own. And if he doesn't make that mistake back in heat race number one, he's in victory lane there and looking at third place points here. Right, right. Right now, though, inside, Walker Evans. There is outside. And up in front of him, by about six or seven car lanes, is the Iron Man. There you see Ivan Stewart getting ready to come down the rhythm section. In fact, here he is from the front. Bouncing along and handling that particular piece of the track quite wisely. And seeing the white flag and knowing he has one lap to go. And he'll have heat race number two in the bag tonight. To the top of turn two, there is Roger Seeger. He's about to come up on turn number two. The Iron Man is leaving them all in the dust. Walker Evans behind him, Roger Sr. in third. They've been one, two, three, almost for the start of this race, certainly from the third lap. And we've got Evan Evans, nose to nose, close to the start and finish line, along with Brian Stewart. No yellows yet, checker flag out. The Iron Man takes it. He's won heat race number two. Walker Evans second, and Roger Sr. third. Ivan Stewart breaks free of the bad luck and wins heat race number two here in Tempe tonight. All right, this is what happens when you get a little sideways. Roger Mears Jr. gets into Brian Stewart just a little, gets Brian up in the air and going the wrong direction. This is luckily a mounted camera, no operator. I guarantee you if there was an operator, he'd be bolting for about 15 rows up into the stands. 
Well, I think we know again why they call you the Iron Man. Uh, no evidence of any pain in that back. No, it's, it feels pretty good, Marty. It's, it's still tender. I baby it a little bit, but uh, but it's working well enough to, to get around the track pretty well. Yeah, well, if that's babying, I'd hate to see it if you're going 100% because you showed no mercy to everybody else. <laughs> well, we got a good start. Things are working. Uh, things are working good. A little bit. Uh, truck's working good. We had the right tire choice, which is real, real critical. Uh, BF Goodrich has got several tires we can choose from, and uh, the track is kind of coming to us, Marty. Felt real good. Well, that's bad news for everybody else if the track is coming to Team Toyota as we head in the main event. Congratulations, Ivan. We'll see you then. Thank you very much, Marty. See you in the main event. Queued up and ready to go for the main event in the Grand National Sport Trucks. And Marty Reed, let's get us up to date on the points. Quick glance at the points. Rod Millen is still on top, but his lead has narrowed as he now holds a 12-point margin over Rick Johnson. Rob McCachron with 171. The biggest jump, look at Ivan Stewart. He has jumped ahead of Danny Thompson into fifth place in the point standings. And with us tonight for the Grand National Main, the man who is the first ever to crack 200 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Tom Sneva. Pleasure to have you with us, Tom. Well, thank you. We're not going to see 200 miles an hour today, but uh, as much as excitement, that's for sure. Might see 200 crashes. That's, that's right. <laughs> I think we might, but, uh, you know, we got Roger Mears down there who's run some Indy cars I've raced against, and uh, and then sort of my favorite, uh, uh, Walker Evans, who uh, I've raced snowmobiles against. So, uh, I don't know who to... Taking your life in your hands with that maneuver. Boy, him and Parnelli, that's, uh, that's a two to dance with, I'll tell you that. There's the front row. Oh, Roger Mears Jr. and the Iron Man Ivan Stewart. Mears Sr. in row number two alongside of Rob McCagran. The number one is Rod Millen alongside Rick Johnson. And there's Gary Scheimer. Ivan looks like he's ready to go. And it, as you mentioned, Marty, uh, can't bet against Roger Sr. I'll tell you what, it'd be great to see Ivan break out tonight. He has had a run of bad luck this year. Moved up to fifth points in the standings with that uh, heat race victory. Uh, Tom, of course, a, a Phoenix resident, and you've been able to catch the races when we're here. You know, the thing I've always, as we see the, the inside-outside lane, this is one of the unique characteristics of this sport. Have you ever had the desire to race one of these? Well, actually, I've done a little bit in the Hoosier Dome when they, uh, they, did, they didn't have dirt. They had mechanical ramps when uh, Mickey tried for a little while. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, it's just everybody has a good time out there. Ivan going back up high again, and Roger's somewhat of a trouble fellow for that turn, and we've got... Mears got punched around by one of the Fords. That's McCachron. He came nose to nose with Walker Evans in that mix, but all escaped, at least for the moment, unscathed, and here comes Ivan and Junior side by side down the rhythm section. It's going to cost Senior a couple of positions, though. And boy, these two for the front. It's now up to Junior to hold up the family honor. He's got the right brew for uh, this part of the racetrack. Well, but you notice the one difference I see is Junior seems to be over the edge a little bit more in these corners than Ivan. Ivan seems to have a little more truck under him. And you wonder if it's Ivan's first choice to go to that top lane. You're right. Sometimes it's not where you want to go. It's where you're forced. Well, we should see now which, which lane was quicker in that run. Boy, it's almost dead even in drill clubs. Ivan's got the lead, though. Just by a hair over Roger Jr. And they come back over the start finish line again. Roger Jr. tries inside, but Ivan will have none of it. Boy, if Ivan Stewart can hold on for this win, oh, and Beers stumps him on the inside and takes yeah. the lead. Great driving by Roger Jr. And now he pads his lead somewhat. Behind both of them in the number seven truck is Rick Johnson. Now, Roger Jr. could use the points. There's no question about that. He was far below in the pack coming into tonight, and a win if he holds on would certainly help him. Well, I'll tell you, you've got to be impressed. Jr.'s had this truck all over the place, uh, Tom Steven, and he's opened up the lead. He really has, and he's taken the inside groove. It looks like the Toyota trucks work better on, uh, on that outside groove. And Roger Jr. goes low as Ivan goes high. It's the strategy all night for both. And we'll see if Ivan can make up some distance. Looks like Roger's having a little trouble with the two tight corners on that inside lane. And, uh, oh, a lot of trouble there. And Ivan and Junior pump go sideways down the rhythm section. And it is Junior who maintains the lead. Look at Millen on the inside. Yeah, Millen may have it. White flag left. Final lap. 
One lap to go, and it's Dillon who's moved into second place. Boy, Ivan dropped back. Oh, and Mir Sr. goes all the way over. But he's up on all four and still running, so there'll be no yellow. And, of course, debris all over the track at this point. And it's still Roger Jr. with the lead, but now it is Millen on his tail, and not Ivan Stewart. Ivan had a little trouble on the outside lane, and that could be the difference in the race. Boy, right now, Jr.'s got his hands full with Millen going into this final turn. He's too high. He's given the door of the opening. Oh, Can he close it? He did. He got it closed just in time. And Roger Mears Jr. will win the main event here in Tempe, Arizona. Roger Mears Jr. now becomes different winner in four separate events so far on the Mickey Thompson circuit. Tom Steven, thanks for joining us. Glad to have you in. Uh, good luck. Thanks, Marty. Uh, I enjoyed it. A lot of fun watching you, Chris. When good. Uh, looks like you went to the head of the pack and uh, weren't about to let anybody get by you. Great job. Ah, uh, thanks. I was trying to make my Budweiser truck as wide as I could there at the end. Uh, I knew that uh, Ivan was pounding on me pretty hard, and and I, I just wanted to make this main event win, boy, I tell you, and it's, it's a big... Oh, here we go. That Take was the end, huh? That yeah. Was last you, lap. You were having a little bit of side bite problems there, and boy, you almost opened the door wide enough for Rod Millen to get through. Oh, no kidding. That was Rod, huh? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I knew once I got around that corner, even though he was there, I knew I had there was more traction out wide, so uh, I stayed out there in the, the rich soil. Well, it, obviously, you got the traction back down to the track because you uh, finished first. First, congratulations. Fourth different winner this year. Oh, isn't Mickey that Thompson great? Tour. Congratulations. Two, two bud trucks in a row. The Mickey Thompson Stadium Off-Road Racing is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. And by Toyota Motorsports, where technology on a fast track is built into every Toyota. And by Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. In-car cameras made possible by your friends at Goodyear, Dodge, American Racing Custom Wheels, and Nature's Recipe Pet Food. Barrier camera compliments of Dick Peck and Rancho Suspension. Now speaking for Marty Reed and Ralph Shaheen, Ken Brew saying so long from Tempe, Arizona, and reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud Sports in association with ESPN.